The drought is over for the Texas Longhorns and the drought around first round draft picks is what I'm referring to. Bijan Robinson went to my Atlanta Falcons in the first round of the 2023 NFL draft pick number eight. Get yourself paid, Bijan Robinson. There's a great article right now by Bobby Burton out on Inside Texas, the Texas on three site where he goes into a little bit more depth around the Texas draft picks for the future potentially and, and B. John Robinson being drafted. But I want to take a look at what this means for Texas because we're not an NFL show. Like I love the NFL. It's phenomenal. I love that it's the most elite level of professional football, but college football special and we talk only college football here. So for Texas, what does this mean? I think there's an external side that feels fairly obvious, and that is the narrative that people like to throw out around Texas, which is, well, hey, if you want to go to Texas, are you going to get developed? No, no, that, that's great. you got a lot of stars. That's great. They have great facilities, and, and NIL is a thing now, so Texas probably is competitive in that space, but are you really going to get developed at Texas? Well, now I think you can do a much more efficient job if you're a Texas fan or if you're on the Texas coaching staff and just sort of tell those people to quiet down a little bit. Like I said, first time that you had a player drafted since 2015 in the first round with B. John Robinson and Steve Sarkeesian can absolutely sign his name next to B. John Robinson being drafted. He absolutely can take a fair amount of credit for how high B. John Robinson was drafted. And B. John Robinson is enormously talented. That was never a question. He was going to get drafted in the NFL wherever he got picked, whether it was first round or third round. But what Steve Sarkeesian did with him in the offense at Texas and how he utilized him, how he showed him off, I think he deserves a fair amount of credit. So I'm not trying to take anything away from Bijan Robinson. I just think if you're Steve Sarkeesian, if you're Texas, you can now pitch to recruits, hey, everybody's saying that you're not getting developed here. Go ask Bijan Robinson how much he was developed at Texas. Ask if coming to Texas was a good move for his professional draft stock. And I think he'll tell you, all that you need to know. The other piece of this is you, you probably already knew Texas was going to recruit well. Like recruiting well for Texas isn't a new thing. I don't think this is something where Texas now all of a sudden has the magic formula and just shoots up the rankings. I mean, they were the number three class a season ago in the 2023 cycle, according to the on three uh, team consensus recruiting rankings. So the thing that I'm looking at here is does this give them just a little bit more reach? Does it put them over the top for maybe one more five-star or allow them to get one more chess piece on the offense or the defensive side? Because with football being a game of inches, and you and I both know sometimes it comes down to just getting that one player on your team that makes the difference on that Saturday, does it allow Texas to just have a little bit more of a reach? Texas already does a great job acquiring talent, but being able to have something tangible to prove to recruits, yes, you can and will get drafted if you come to Texas. I think it could be a nice little ace in the sleeve for them. So I don't know if it changes the way they recruit, but I think it does help a little bit externally at least. It helps quiet down that narrative that you're not going to get developed at Texas. Bijan Robinson going top 10 just kind of puts the hush-hush on all of that. Make sure you subscribe to the On3 YouTube channel. Texas fans, we appreciate y'all. We love y'all, man. Y'all been rolling with us since we got this whole operation started. Since we were in a makeshift, uh, a makeshift lobby in Waco, Texas, under another channel, y'all been rocking with us. If you haven't yet subscribed to the On3 YouTube channel, now is the time. We appreciate y'all for that. Follow me on the gram at JD Pakel on Twitter, as well as on Instagram. So that's the external side, how it looks to everybody around. The internal side, I think, is a little bit interesting. Because for Texas now, you have proof of concept with your developmental process internally. Like, there's, there's never been an issue with getting talent in the doors at Texas, but there was a drought going on since 2015, getting guys drafted in the first round. Now you have something where you can say, okay, we, we're now doing things right. I don't know that was ever a question internally, but now you have proof of concept for yourself. I think things are just continuing to trend in a positive way, and internally, this is even more proof. You keep proving to yourself that this is a new Texas. Texas has had a lot of talented guys come through there since 2015. B. John Robinson, I think, is just the tip of the iceberg. If for nothing else, you're proving it to yourself as a developmental staff, we're getting guys doing the right things to get to where they want to go, which I don't know you could always say previously. Some of that's culture. Some of that's 
the the sports science element of it, I would imagine. But I just think this is encouraging for Texas because you are what you produce. There's the external side, but internally, you can now say, we, we trust our process. Our process has produced the results that we want. And that's a very good thing. So now you build upon that. But I don't think we're going to see another, dra- another drought like this when it comes to the NFL draft for Texas for the foreseeable future. I mean, Bobby Burton, like I said, his article has an extensive list as to guys that he thinks could potentially be the next first rounder taken. But I mean, Xavier Worthy has to be in that conversation, right? Especially if he has another big year and is able to get back to what we've seen Xavier Worthy be capable of doing. He's definitely got to be in that first round conversation. Quinn Ewers, I know a lot of people have opinions on him, but what if he goes out and has just a huge 2023 What if he goes out and puts up numbers? Where does he fall in the NFL draft conversation? There's always a need for quarterbacks. So for Texas, the process is in place to produce first-round talent. The talent is in place to produce first-round talent. And I'm curious to see how it impacts them with getting maybe one more five-star or one more guy that's going to help them on the recruiting trail. But the guys they have in-house, I think this, this talent and this development at Texas could put them in good position to maybe put a little streak together. I don't know. We'll see. We'll talk about it probably when this time of year rolls around again, NFL draft talks starts up again. But for Texas, I keep saying it. Steve Sarkeesian has now cultivated a new Texas on the 40 acres. And Bijan Robinson going in the top 10 to my Atlanta Falcons. Just another step in the right direction and more proof of concept. Appreciate y'all rocking with us again, Texas fans. Haven't yet subscribed. Would love to have you at this party. We're live tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern. The video will be under the live tab here very, very soon. Going to be scheduled out for that time. Hit the bell under that video. Hit the bell on this channel to make sure you know when we go live. Follow me on the gram. Follow me on Twitter, at Jody Pakel. Want to keep up with y'all. A great medium for us to do so. We're going to keep this party rolling, and we will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.